Well, good Friday evening, everybody. It's good to be back, as always. We got uh, we've got a pretty sh- full show uh, this week. Uh, lots of news happened this week, uh, and uh, as it goes, we actually have no separate review, no separate interview this week. So we're gonna just let Couch Co-op go for probably the full hour. You know whose fault that is? Is Ubisoft for not feeding us any dinner at all this week? Right. I mean, seriously, I, where's... I had to feed myself on Wednesday. It was terrible. Oh, my god! I can tell you the food was way worse. Tico, you had to feed yourself? Yeah. It, yes, it was way worse. That's, that sounds horrible. Somebody walking around with little plates. That doesn't happen in my house. People don't walk around with little plates in my house with little little miniature versions of food. And, that and, I and a little bar where you can just walk up and order a drink? Yeah, I, yeah, mean, I need to. Yeah, we need more of that. Come on, Ubisoft, launch another game. You know, or just have these people wandering around my house. I'm fine with that, too. <laughs> That's good, too, yeah. Especially with that uh, the little finger foods they were having. There's some yeah. good stuff there. It was that delicious. Was, uh, what was the hamburger? The tr- Was it chorizo sausage uh, slider? Yes. Oh, oh so my good. Oh, gosh. That was the best. Ba- with a little bit of brie, uh, whatever oh. that, that charred thing on top. I don't necessarily know if that was yeah it was as necessary. But, you know, it, I, it, I mean, it tasted good, so maybe it was necessary. Who okay, knows? Okay, now I'm hungry. All right, show's over. I'm going to eat. My wife right now is actually well, is she's she's wrapping hot dogs in bacon and then we're gonna barbecue them. So okay, we'll be back with the review at the end of the show of bacon of wrapped hot dogs. hot dogs. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Um, so let's start with some TV. There's not much TV that I want to talk about this week, but I did start the new Star Wars Rebellion uh, cartoon. Uh, Re- that, uh, Resistance. Sorry, Resistance. I'm, yeah, sorry, Resistance because it now, that takes place in between episodes six and seven. Uh, yes. And it's more closer to The Force Awakens uh, than anything because it does have Poe Dameron and uh, Captain Phasma in it. So it's closer to The Force Awakens than other stories. Um, seen the first three episodes. I am not crazy about it yet. It is very, like, m- almost more kid-friendly than their yeah. previous attempts. You know, and w- What do you think of the art style and the, and the, the new art style? I don't mind the art style. It, it's nope. much different. It's it's very little texture is really what comes down to. Yeah. And it's full 3D animation. It's not cell animation. It's not like drawing. It is full 3D CGI animation, but with very, very little texture. Like skin, for example, their face is just a color. Yeah. There's no wrinkles. There's no spots. It's just the color of their face and then wherever the shadows happen to lie. So it's a very plain looking animation style. I don't mind it, but story wise, it's like it, it's done nothing for me. You know, it seems really kind of silly and over the top. And I don't feel like even Rebels was like that. You know, yeah. um, but I, I will give it a chance because, like Rebels and like Clone Wars, um, as the show progressed, it got better like storytelling wise Uh, like they're just right now establishing uh, characters and locations and i'm just not sold on it yet i was expecting more i think you know especially after rebels and clone wars so i may give it a shot we'll see uh but what i am excited for is we got news this week that um uh, sorry iron man's director uh uh, what's his name john favreau john favreau he yeah. is developing a Star Wars live action show called yes. The Mandalorian, which looks. Yes. Uh, I, I was going to say it looks amazing, but I haven't seen anything. It and sounds who are, who are amazing. the Mandalorians, in case people don't know. Well, The know. Mandalorian, basically, Boba Fett wears Mandalorian armor. Yeah. So this is, uh, I guess, one of the last surviving Mandalorians. I don't know the status of the Mandalorians in the later sequ- later uh, stories of the later saga, but the Mandalorians did feature heavily in the Clone Wars. They were yeah. going through a civil war at the time. I don't know the status of the Mandalorians at the time at, at this point. Um, I do believe this also takes place in between or in that thirty year gap between six and seven. Yeah. I'm excited for this. It's live action Star Wars television show. I'm really excited yes. for this. This is what I would love to see. I, I think I'm just more excited to have a weekly Star Wars TV show 
you know, as opposed to like two years between movies or a year between movies yeah. or whatever, right? As much and, as I and, love and the movies, action. the lo- don't get me wrong, I love the movies, but to be able to say I'm going to be able to watch Star Wars every week live action, that's exciting to me. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that, too. That is pretty cool. I mean, there's been a few other things, too. Uh, the Witcher um, announced a lot of their casting for the Netflix yeah, Witcher show. As well. I am I am not I am not sold on their casting choices for The Witcher. Uh, for one thing, okay, so they've cast, like, it looks like she's 14 years old, uh, the character. Or younger. To, or younger to, to play Siri. But yeah. then Yennefer, who is supposed to be 120 years older than Siri. And yeah. is practically a mother figure to her. They cast someone who looks like sixteen, and who's also supposed to be a love interest for, to Gar- for yeah, f- uh, for um, Henry Cavill. Henry, Henry Cavill, like yeah, which is going to be a weird because that that that's, that's just me, when I looked. That's the first thing I looked at when I saw okay, him and her. I'm like that no. is going to look weird when they try to do some of those flirty right? love scenes and stuff like that like it's gonna be she is yeah, way, that's gonna be a little odd way too young to be playing yennefer you know I mean, we'll have to see yennefer how is out. older than Geralt. yeah like she shouldn't be she shouldn't look half his age well she should i mean even half his age is i mean he he, he looks 40 and she looks like less than half his age she, so that's what i'm saying like she shouldn't look less than half his she should look I'd say they should have um, they should have cast someone maybe around thirty years old, in like real life. I mean, right? Yeah. An actor who's around thirty is really who they should have cast, not someone yeah. who looks only a couple of years older than Siri. Siri, I get Siri is young. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if she's as young as the c- girl they cast. I, I think that that may be. It, yeah, again, I guess it's, I suppose it depends on. I mean, this may be like this may be the Witcher universe, but not the story that we're used to playing. Well, it's not based game on the game, game at all. It's based no, on it's the based books. Off the book, which yeah. I guess it might. Yeah, that may be different. So we'll see how that plays out. But I mean, I I am interested in seeing what becomes of that. I don't necessarily oh, know sure. if I love the casting. No, I agree. I am looking forward to seeing it, but I think the casting choices at this time, unless. You know, when we see them in makeup and full on, full costume, maybe it changes how they look. Yeah. But at first glance, the casting is not working for me. Like yeah. I, I didn't even think Henry Cavill was a good choice. But yeah, I mean, if you look be, at he might be okay. I mean, if you look at Superman, like Man of Steel with a beard, okay, yeah. I guess I could see Geralt in that. But yeah, and I've seen him in it. Like he was in the Mission Impossible. Yeah. Uh, you know the whole thing where he, you know, he does the whole arm loading thing where he's going after. <laughs> true, true. Have you seen? Have you seen the thing where they put the the shotgun cocking sounds when he does that that move with he where he, he gets his no. uh, ready to do? They put in like uh, shotgun cocking sounds. So as he does that, it's like <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. Before he goes to the fight, it's pretty. It's pretty. Oh, funny. in Mission Impossible, in the in yeah, the bathroom, they, the bathroom scene. Yeah, yeah, where okay. he's like, you know, I guess he's getting his arms ready to start yeah. punching, and he's, he does that, and they, somebody threw in shotgun cocking sounds, which that's I funny. say adds to it. I, oh, that's I say funny. Adds, if you could get that every time you like got ready for a fight, I think that would scare people. Right? It's like it's it's that's the new cracking your knuckles before a fight. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, um, um, yeah. yeah so there's what a bunch, did you of, bunch of uh, well, I watched the Gifted. I, I sort of caught up a little bit on Gifted season two. Um, uh, see, I was. I'm not. I I watch season one, yeah, and I felt it like I honestly I was bored of the gifted season one. I think it dragged on way too long. It uh, it never really gave me what I expected from a quote unquote X Men show. It yeah, it you does know? not give you that feeling of like it doesn't even really give you like I mean it's people with powers. It does not give you. It feels more like. Something along the lines of heroes, like a completely standalone thing, as opposed to part of the the Marvel universe. Well, here's my problem with uh, season one, anyway, and I have not watched season two because season one left me very much wanting. Um, so I really wasn't going to continue with it. My problem is it is literally a show about people running. Yeah, and that is it. It's just about them running from the government, and to me, that is too. For the best way to describe it, I, it feels too stressful watching that every single <clears> week, <throat> just them running and running from the government and always in trouble. Well, it's like it's it just it, it never went anywhere. 
so here, here's here's the reason why I think is the characters in the show they're constantly looking over their shoulder and looking Always. back at what's, but they're never looking forward to to a plan. So you're not as a fan, sort of. I see where there's, they're going. With there's this. no hope, right? You, right? you you don't see like I don't know what their plan is, where their end game is going to be with this. So right. I'm not really like there's nothing to root for. So I just feel disjointed every time I watch an episode. Like it, it doesn't feel like you're catching up. It feels like. I don't know, it just feels very odd. I'm, I, I've watched the first two episodes of this season. I'll continue to watch it, because it's what I do, is I watch things. You do watch um, things, just like you uh, press buttons, you watch yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. So I'll continue to watch it, but um, it's not one, like, it, it's one that I'm sort of letting three or four episodes stack, and I'll watch them when I have, you know, some time when I can't sleep or something like that. This year, for me, it was about um, trimming some of the fat from our, our watch schedule, and Dorothy felt uh, the same way as, as... You sleep. You guys sleep too much. That's the problem. Uh, I, 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 get insom- I get insomnia, and I will I will play play some games and watch some TV sure. at the same time. I've got multiple screens going, so I like to have yeah, things and that I can't I can do throw that. on. I can't do that with TV. When I'm watching TV, I have to watch TV. I like it to be the center of what I'm watching, right? I can't yeah. just have it on the side. Um, even I found even today at lunch, I was watching something and I looked to the other screen to read some email that had just come in and I'm like, what did I just miss? And I had to go back like 30 seconds because I hate feeling like I missed something. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a weird feel, but I, I often have, I have a, a screen going with TV. I have a screen going with the Xbox going and then often on my phone, sending texts and stuff like that uh, at the same time. So I've got usually three to four screens going at once. So you never really know what's going on. Uh, in anything. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. I'm just completely lost. The text conversation, no clue what's going on, no, no idea what's going on in the game or the movie I'm watching. So like, it's complete, I'm completely lost everywhere. Excellent. Excellent. So Chico, that's, that's how I get through You're so recording much stuff. Couch Co-op right now. What? Is that today? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um... The other thing is, um, again, I haven't started watching any of these yet, but uh, on Netflix today, uh, The House on Haunted Hill uh, dropped today, the yeah. horror series, yeah, that um, looks which has been getting uh, really good reviews, early reviews. Um, uh, it's been being uh, to- uh, toted as one of the, the better horror uh, TV shows. Um, we are big fans of horror, so that's one I have to wait for so, Shannon and we'll watch so that. So actually horror, not Castle Rock, who just says it's horror? This is apparently actual horror, um, apparently very well done. I know there is a Sabrina um, TV series coming to Netflix uh, towards in, the end of this month. As in the, the Teenage Witch? Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but a dark take on oh. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Well, Charmed is coming back, which I'm excited and, for. And, and Charmed is coming back as well, this month as well, I believe. I believe it's like for Halloween, I think Charmed is, yeah. is launching. I'm excited because I watched the original Charmed. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, not all five or seven seasons i can't remember how many they had um it was one of those shows at the time we kind of lost track of it i think it was moving around the networks so yeah it was what is yeah yeah uh so but i like i like supernatural you know vampires werewolves uh witches i like that kind of uh, just anything supernatural i actually really enjoy um and so there's also a new uh spin-off from the vampire diaries which is actually from the originals uh, kind of both because uh, Hope Michelson from the originals is basically starring in this spinoff of Vampire Diaries and uh, Alaric from Vampire Diaries is heading up this school for the supernatural, right? And uh, okay. and sort of it's continuing the Vampire Diaries lore into a new show, uh, I think, called... Uh, you know what? I can't even think of the name of it right now. I'll have to look so it up. Come, come prepared, Sean. Well, come prepared. Come prepared to talk about something I didn't know we were talking about. Yeah, come prepared. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll find it. But uh, right. I'm looking yeah, forward I'll... to that. I, I, I stopped watching uh, the originals, but I, I watched all of Vampire Diaries. So I might pick up this new one as well. What you doing there, Tico? Not sending a text. I see. During the show... Listen. You are sending. I, oh, you did just say you do multitask, but that was yeah. not very good multitasking. I don't know what I just sent, but I did. Send, <laughs> oh, good. But I did send a text. So. All right. Listen, Sean. Um, 
did you see the news this week? A uh, little bit of news. I think it's the last thing in news we want to talk about for television and movies. But uh, so recently, James Gunn was fired from Marvel because of tweets he tweeted ten years ago. Yeah, I'm sure you've all heard how stupid this is. Like seriously, the the writer director of the last two Guardians of the Galaxy about uh, to move on to the third. And has already written the third, actually. Yes, that's right. Um, and they are apparently using his script still for the third. They Good. have fired him as a director because yes. they don't feel their image. So, like, seriously. It, Some, something he tweeted ten years ago. And has subsequently apologized for those yes. tweets before this ten became... Ten years an, ago. Before this became an an, uh, an issue. He, he's apologized for this. I mean, this, this was something that was brought up uh, because of his political views. Um, yeah. And uh, so he was being punished for that, and Marvel has decided to take a, a, an odd stand. Um, but, uh, you know, good news for DC that Marvel, uh, you yes. know, is not thinking, thinking forward because they have, uh, they have hired him on to write and possibly direct uh, Suicide Squad 2. Which I'm kind of thankful for because the I, Suicide Squad movie was horrible. Here, okay, so the Suicide Squad, I liked the concept, the Suicide Squad, like, I, there was a lot of things I liked about it, just the movie I didn't like. I didn't like, it was jumping jumping all over the place, there was time cuts without any explanation for time cuts. The Suicide Squad is that exact type of group, that the misfits coming together type of group that he did with Guardians of the Galaxy. If he can, if he can take a little bit of what he did to Guardians of the Galaxy and do that with Suicide Squad... I'm I'm really yes, yes. kind of excited for for two now. Yes, I, I exactly. I think he he can make Suicide Squad work, you know, um, because he really made Guardians work. Like he was yeah. the force behind the both Guardians films, you know. And uh, I I'm hoping he can make that same magic with Suicide Squad. My understanding is they are going to kind of approach it from a, a let's kind of forget the first movie happened stance. Yeah, like we'll just tell it's not going to be Suicide Squad 2. It's Suicide Squad subtitle. Maybe a subtitle. It might be 2, who knows, but it's not going to be like a direct sequel of the events of the first. They're just kind of like, yeah. they're just going to move on. You know, yeah. they're not going to retrofit the first one. They're not going to try to overwrite it. They're yeah. just going to kind of move on. You know, it happened. Let's just forget that it happened and move They'll just along. Start off, start off the second one with like Amanda Waller waking up from a bad dream. <laughs> And, right. and move forward from there. Right. Uh, Legacies, by the way, is the new Vampire Diaries spinoff. Legacies. Legacies. All right. Yes. Legacies. We will maybe look at that. Is that this month as well? I don't think it's until next year. Maybe it is this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I, I, just, I love October for all of the, the, the random movies that come out, the random horror movies, and all of the, the TV series and stuff like that that come out and drop around this time. I am excited about the that that is that sort of genre of, it of television series. It is so. this month. It is October 25th is the premiere. Okay. Well, then we will check that out. Yeah, And there will be a few characters, I think, from each show uh, probably early on to just kind of cement the fact that this is a Vampire Diaries spinoff and it's in the same world, you know, other yeah. than the fact that Hope, Michelson, and Alaric are in it. Um, but I believe um, Matt Donovan is going to be in it as well from Vampire Diaries and we'll see who else. So it'll be interesting. I might give it a try because I do like that world, even though I did not enjoy well, we have to the try originals. it now and tell all the people who tuned into this show now are going to tune in after the 25th to want to know what we thought of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. So we've got lots and lots of gaming news to talk about. Lots. But first, Tico, I want to do yes. something new tonight. This is something okay. that uh, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time and we just never happened. And uh, you and I have been looking for some fun little segments to do on the show. So yes. we're going to try what, uh, basically a little game that we are tentatively calling seven degrees of translation it's not tentative if you have a graphic it's this not is tentative. true this is this but is officially we'll named this now we'll see if it works right but i mean this whether or not if it works then we'll see if the game comes back so second seven degrees of translation uh if you can already guess what it is we're gonna take we've each picked three games and we've run it through google translate seven times 
Yes. Okay. Uh, so I have run it, obviously, starting in English and ending up in English. I ran it through Japanese, Azerbaijani, to Hindi, to Latin, to Persian, to Pashto, and finally back to English. So my first one, Tico, for you. Yep. All right. This is the translated one, obviously. My first one is, there is no horizon. Uh, I am going to have to go with Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> You're absolutely right. That was an easy one, my friend. All right. What have you got for me? And what languages right. did you so, use? Uh, I, I, again, we, these were picked at random. And I did, I, I went through a couple of times because some of these, when you hit certain languages, I found it makes it untranslatable back to anything. Oh. So uh, I had actually Klingon as one of my languages, but <laughs> when it tries to translate back from Klingon, it, it just completely loses it, and I just got a string of random letters back. Really? So I, I knocked Klingon out of the thing. So I went Greek, Hindi, Japanese, Hebrew, Russian, then Dutch. Back, and then to, back English. to English. So we both chose Japanese and Hindi. That's funny. Yes. That's okay. Yes. Okay. So what is your first one then? All right. Uh, the first one. Relaxing Horizon Dawn, D O N. Well, I'm gonna also say Horizon Zero Dawn. It, that is correct. <laughs> but I just I figured that, I figured since we both used that one, I would I would uh, give you that one as well. But it's Dawn, D O N. That somehow. is. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting how seven different languages we both translated yeah. the same thing and came out with two completely different results. Yeah. Right. And we both guessed it correctly. So obviously we're both, you know, well, multilingual. It is interesting, I find, that the word horizon was the only one that actually translated f through both of our translations. Yeah, and it came back through. Came back as horizon. Yeah. Okay, so my next one I think I think is easy as well. This right. one is Sea Stolen. Sea? Like sea as in as in, -E? as in the water. Okay, so C stolen. Uh, okay, I don't know why I'm I'm coming up blank here all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right. So it was a fairly recent release earlier this year. Earlier this year, well, I can't remember games anymore. Is it PlayStation or Xbox or I, both? It is Xbox. It is Xbox. All right. Oh, so you're losing stolen. points. You needed hits. I know. Uh, I am. I'm. No. I'm. I'm drawing a complete blank at this point. I got nothing. Okay. Do you want me to try to get you to think about it? C. Yes. So yes. water. Yes. Stolen. Who steals things? Thieves. C. Sea of thieves. Oh, Sea of Thieves. Oh, my gosh, Tico. Well, that's nobody remembers that game. <laughs> I've got nobody copies of Sea of Thieves to give away for extra life. Okay, but nobody remembers it. That's the problem. Okay, I played it for five minutes. Uh, okay, fine. All right. I have... Uh, you know, you realize all our listeners are literally yelling at you right now. Yeah. Well, Because they, they, yes, they, they got it five minutes ago. Yes, I know. I don't know. I had the word ocean stuck in my head. <laughs> And I couldn't get that out. All right. Ninja sign. Ninja sign? Ninja sign. Sign. Ninja. Mark of the ninja. Mark of the ninja. There you go. <laughs> I All went right. topical because we, you know, yeah, you know I, sure. I played that this week. So I went topical with that one. Here's my last one that I find the result to be extremely weird. Yeah, but I did it anyway. So this is your definitely bleh, definitely going to be hard. All right, okay? and I'll tell you where the colon is as well because this is a game with a colon. All right, hearing victims colon Hollywood. Hearing victims colon Hollywood. Hearing victims. Uh... <laughs> it is the strangest translation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hearing victims. Hollywood. <laughs> so, like, not deaf. L.A. Noir. No. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. That what? Is, <laughs> that is... That Those ones are hard because Hellblade's not really a word. Hellblade's not a word, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's well, a proper name. What's funny is 
most of the translation, the word Hellblade always came back as Hellblade because it wouldn't translate it. And then yeah. suddenly the last two changed it. So that it was, is, yeah. Yeah. And even uh, Senua. Right. Senua's a name. Yeah. Right? Unless one of my languages, Senua, Senua, is, Senua might translate in something. Japanese or something like that. Senua might actually be a word that means something. And, and then if, comes back. If you think about it, hearing in the game, she's hearing voices in her head. But she is, yeah, she is a hearing victim. She's a victim from all of the hearing of well, things that she hears. Like that's the way the game progresses. She hears voices in her head. Yeah. Right. So it's interesting that the word Senua translated to what looks like hearing, which is which adds a whole new light to the game. Yeah. All right. My last one. Enemy inhabitant. Uh. Enemy inhabitant. I'm. Uh, is it the enemy within? No. No. no uh, okay. It is a game. It is. It is a game that was really. It was released last year, but uh, I didn't go with the 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 number. It's it's a it's a series of games. I did not go with any numbers. There well, was. That's what one I was. Released. I was thinking of XCOM two. Yeah, there was a there was one release last year, but it it has been released on pretty much every console that you know over the last uh you know few years it's been on xbox it's been on nintendo it's been on so on oh, and, this, and this is the main name of the game this is the main name this, of the this game is the ip name okay so give the it to IP me again name. i didn't go with the number enemy inhabitant enemy inhabitant and it is a series oh goodness i can't even uh we should have a little countdown. Do, 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 yeah, we need some do, Jeopardy music right? unless that's copyrighted. I have um, no idea. Probably. It's not like we're making money on these shows anyway. That's true. Um, and this is definitely a game I've played or I know of. You should. You know of it. I don't know if you've played it. Mm. I, I imagine you've probably played one of them at some point in your life. Oh, goodness. Uh, I will tell you, I will give you this. This month is a good theme themed month for it. Okay. See, that's why I said um, the enemy within. I was thinking of the the horror game. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of one. Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Oh, that makes total sense too. Yeah, inhabitant resident. Absolutely makes sense. Yeah. Okay, Resident Evil. Good. No, I've definitely played a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Which is yeah. interesting because Japanese it didn't translate to. Uh, is, is it bio? What is it? Biohazard. Biohazard. Yeah. It did not translate, obviously, to that because we're just translating the words. Oh, that's fun. Japanese. That's fun. I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. I think uh, I think seven degrees of translation should come back. Uh, we do want to know, listeners or viewers, what do you think? Was that fun for you? Um, you know, what would be fun for us too is actually if you sent us some. You know, yes, yeah, send us individually yeah. direct message either at Mr. Second Place or at Ziantane. Yep. And you know, so if you want ones for Sean to guess, send them to me and I will uh run them through a So tell us a, or just tell us what it is. You yeah. you can translate it if you'd like. Yeah. Tell us which languages you used. It has to be seven languages total. Uh that includes the final translation back to English. Yeah, you so know. six so plus English. Six yeah, so you start with English, add six, and then back to English, that's seven. Send us the result and tell us what the result, what the, what the answer is, and then we'll, uh, we'll pass it on. It'll be part of the game for the next week. So that'd be cool if you yep. did that. But uh, that was fun. Thank you, uh, that Tico. Was. That was. All I right, think so, I won. I believe I won the, the round. Uh, okay. If we're tallying scores. You didn't get Sea of Thieves. Yeah, but you didn't get You Resident? got Ocean something. Yeah. I even gave you the answer. All right. We'll go with a tie then. <laughs> We're gonna have to get a big board. We'll have to get the big the big board of uh, of uh, of totals at right. some point. Who got what? How many hints did we were given? The new point system. Uh, so this week, I think we've both been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Lots, a lots, lot. lots, and um, I th I have a little bit more I want to say about it. There's a couple of things. Uh, that have come up since we talked last week that I really, really like. And yeah. that is the whole cultist tree, uh, which mm -hmm. is similar to, in the previous ones, you have this big list of Templars or leaders you have to uh, track down, right? And it's usually all part of the actual story. This is now a huge list of these cults, this cult of Cosmos. And there's 44 people. Yeah. And you don't is. know who they are. 
What's cool about it is you have to find clues to discover each of the identities. Once you discover the identity of that person, you can then go hunt them down and yeah. take them out, which then gives you clues for the head of that. Because each, the way it works is there's six, I think. Branches. Six branches. branches. Yeah. Each branch has five people in it plus the head of the branch. And then yeah. there's this main the inner circle the there's inner the circle inner circle which is the the head of each of the branches yeah. and then there's like the head of it all right so there's 44 cultists and they all range from like level 15 to level 45 or more yeah and these are what you use killing them gives you the um the triangles i'm sure they have a proper word yeah the they're, triangles. They're pieces of eden or something they have something to do with pieces of eden which which will al allow you to upgrade yeah. your spear that's right thank you yeah so that upgrades your spear that you have so i am really really enjoying that concept of the game yeah now, um one thing i did notice this week however tico is depending on what what difficulty you're playing on i'm playing on normal yes um, i'm i'm playing on less than normal <laughs> Because you are less than normal, uh, I am playing on because I'm I'm have six things going on at once. Yeah, I so know. no, I mean it's it, I honestly I play lots of games on easy, so I, it's yeah. just I really enjoy uh, games like this that I'm totally into. I usually play on normal, but um, what I don't like, however, Tico, is that the regions level up with you. I don't yeah. like the idea. So, for example, the starting area that when you started playing that was level a level yep. 10 area, which means the max it goes to is level 10. Yep. But I've noticed now that I am level 24. It's a level 22 area. Yeah, so the on on normal, um, the areas and and your, your quests, even quests that you've already accepted. Um, Are leveling, also, yeah. They, they, level they all up level with, with you. you, so they're always two levels below your level. And I think so on the, on easy, they're I'm sorry, four, some, it's four levels on easy. Four levels on easy, two levels on normal, and probably less on the higher ones. I'm guessing it's probably just stays with you. Maybe or on that. one or even on hard, it's the same as your level. But here's my problem with that: as an RPG, which this is, you yeah, know, they've really brought in the RPG mechanics. The reason I don't like it because is is because as an RPG. I want to get to a. I want to be able to grind if I want to, to become overpowered, right? Yeah. To feel like I'm a god. You know what I mean? And if you constantly level up the enemies and constantly level up the areas, you never get that <laughs> feeling. So you never have that sense of accomplishment that, oh man, you can't touch me because I am so higher powered yeah. than you. I like because I I like that I've, I've I've enjoyed that feeling in the past where I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you know I'll stand here and let you hit me for a few minutes and then I'm just gonna destroy everybody with one punch exactly um, to me you that's, don't you don't that, get you know, that with you don't get no, that with this I, I I do and I don't like it I mean it, it makes it so there's there's not much point to I'm gonna hold off on doing a bunch of these quests and come back when I'm massively overpowered and just run through the game yep. Um, it it does force you now to, like you you have to play. You have to get better at the gameplay, um, using your skills properly and stuff like that. I've I've noticed, but I I'm still finding now that I still am getting overpowered on in some areas, particularly some areas where like okay I'm gonna go do this area. I've I've you know staked out the area. There's twelve guys in there. I'm gonna sneak around, take them out. Okay, now there's this clustered group of guys. Yeah. I'm gonna sneak up, kill one of them, and then the other three guys I'm gonna take on in a three on one battle, and then like three of the mercenaries show up and yeah yeah so it, listen i'm i am absolutely loving the game i play it every night i i get lost in the game um uh there is a lot to do like it's i'm finding there is so many side quests and so many contracts and bounties you can take but what i'm finding tico is it doesn't feel overwhelming it's just like here's just a bunch of stuff to do if you want or you can just continue with the story yeah. You know, and I'm finding that as the completionist I am, I tend to want to finish an entire area before leaving it. But this game is making me get out of that habit because 
honestly, they're constantly updating the side quests and the bounties. There's always new bounties. There's somewhere. always new stuff popping up. So it's like I have like, and I started doing that too. As I'm little, I'm not leaving this island until I get everything done. And I'm like, okay, this stuff keeps coming. And now like this, there's, there's, yeah. there's bounties. Like I have to leave the island to do this bounty. Yeah. But, and as soon as I go do that bounty, like I said, naval bounty, I, and I sink a couple of ships. Somehow I get another bounty to do more stuff that drags me further and back. And yeah. I come back, and now Which there's more. Is good because even that it forces you to move on. You it know? does. The game yeah. forces you to. Okay, you've spent too much time in this area. I'm gonna make you go to the next area now because you need to continue. Yeah. You know. I am. I am now level thirty five. Um, I have put in, I think, according to my, my little tracker there, it's uh, just under 50 hours. Wow. So I'm about 30, and I'm level 24, I think. Yeah. Now, my 50 hours is probably because I've left it, like, you know, like, I'll, I'll put it on pause and, and go, you know, watch TV for an hour with Shannon or something like I that. I am so wary of stuff like that when I know the game is timing me because I love, I love in-game stats. Yeah, you know? I'm I'm not as concerned about the that, so like I'm I'm okay with leaving it. So I know about that, but I'm I'm on chapter six out of out of nine now. Yeah, like a story. Like I'm trying to do the the Minotaur quest right now, which oh, is okay. Five levels above me, but I am excited to do that. Okay. Um. There was a there's there's apparently a a funny take on EA in that Minotaur quest. They make fun of EA. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, which so I, I'm not going to give it away because it's 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 actually kind of funny. Well, but, there's there's several quests leading up to it. Now I've done everything up until I think to the point where I have to do the actual Minotaur battle. So I don't know. I don't know. I probably I may have passed that part already. Oh, but I'm at. So, isn't there a there's a spot when you like you're supposed to buy something from someone? You're supposed to buy tokens. Oh yes. Right. Yes. And yes. they say something. The, yeah, you have to do it. so. One of the early parts of the things you have to do a do a quest where you say, "Well, you need to prove yourself worthy to face the Minotaur, so you must complete three trials." When you get to the guys giving the trials, like, would you rather just pay me to get get my token? Yeah. Um, and he says something, something about uh, where's your sense of accomplishment or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh, did you uh, pay him? I, I no, no, I, I haven't don't. done the quest yet, but that's oh. that's the. Because uh, the remember the EA battle, right? The oh about uh, yeah. buying the DLC was so that players could have a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. So um, it is it is a fun fun thing. Um, some of the I don't don't really want to spoil much, but you do end up through part of that quest. I haven't actually fought the Minotaur yet, but you end up with uh, a, a Minotaur mask at one point, and you can wear that as a helmet. Oh, nice. Okay. So I'm running. I was running around for a good portion of the game wearing, you know, a, a, a bull's head. Oh man, I uh, when it comes to game like games like this, I I actually go for the like. There are times I'll grab the functional armor, but I prefer the armor that looks good. So I'm yeah. looking for functional armor, but also looks good. I don't like the whole crazy weird. Uh, armor that's that you can get in some games like this so yeah i'm i'm looking I, i'm actually looking there's an achievement for it as well i'm looking to get a uh, a legendary set there are the each each of the legendary items are part of a set there's an achievement for completing a set yes yeah yeah and i'm working on uh i'm working one of the, the stealth sets right now which is actually from bringing down the cult uh, yeah i think it's the the cult of the, the the order of the eye or something has this this snake skin type suit which is really good for for uh, stealth and assassin yeah uh, so i'm working on I, I think i've got three of the five now so yeah i'm looking for that set so you also played i'm really excited to hear about this you played the mark of the ninja remastered which was one of your uh your games um so let me let me fix this while you talk about it because i've apparently right. got the wrong so uh, the wrong video yeah, because this is this is just more Assassin's Creed. Um, so, Mark of the Ninja, it, it's a remaster. Um, uh, the company uh, can, is it Klee Klee? I can't pronounce their name. Starts with a K. Um, yeah, they, they, Klee Klee or something. Klee. Like that, yeah. Oh, okay, it's Klee. Okay. Um, so they they've remastered this game, and they actually had a really cool deal. If you had owned this um, previously with all the DLC and everything like that, you get the game for free. Um, if it's if it's on your account, you get the game for free. If you own yeah. the base game. 
uh, which is what I owned, um, you get the game for five dollars on the same network as you originally. Right. It. Yes. Sorry. Like so. Yeah, I owned it on the 360, so I'm able to to get it on the Xbox One for right. the for the cheap price. Yeah. Um, it is a really good looking upgrade. It looks very pretty. Um, you know, very very neat sort of cartoony type things. It is a stealth like it, it actually really does feel um, like Assassin's Creed, like the the side scrolling ones that they've they've done. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Um, it's a little different, but yeah, I, I agree with you. It's it definitely got that feel to it. Yeah. Um, so you play a ninja. The Assassin's Creed Chronicles. This is, I think you're Chronicles. To. Chronicles. Yes. Um, so you play a, a ninja, and uh, the idea is to get from one side of the map to the other while rescuing fellow ninjas and not getting shot by uh, assault guys. I am terrible at stealth, as you are aware, so this I have murdered. This game is hard, even for me, who loves stealth. I found this game difficult. Uh, yeah, but I do. Uh, I love this game. I, I loved it on 360. Um, so I may I may go ahead and upgrade it because um, actually it in, is. in in personal news I'm going to be upgrading tomorrow to the Xbox One X. Yes, a very, uh, very EB, yeah, new EB Games, pretty device. EB Games has a good upgrade uh, path uh, t uh, starting today, so I'm taking my Xbox One in and I'm grabbing an Xbox One X for pretty cheap. Yeah, and we'll have some really really cool looking videos coming from Sean soon. Because you don't already. No. Oh no. All right. No, you, well, I'm just saying we'll have you know videos coming from your Xbox, not your PlayStation. We'll see. I'll, I'll be able to play my my one 4K Blu-ray that I've got. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, like Sony, as stupid as they are, they decided that the poor Pro shouldn't play 4K Blu-rays. A 4K machine that does not play 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, they didn't. But really I think digress. That was Mark of they the Ninja. Looks Mark like a great upgrade. Like really, I, I'm quite, and and not only that, Tico. You mentioned you can upgrade for four bucks, five dollars. Five dollars. But yeah. did you mention that actually some people get it for free? Yes. If so, if you had the deluxe edition or the the regular edition with the um, the DLC purchased previously, yeah, you get um, it for you free. Get, you get the whole thing for free, and That's this awesome. includes all of the all of the DLC and everything. It is it is a. It's a fun game. I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm yeah. I'm terrible at some of these some of these parts here, like the the lasers. It's up Not there, Tico. It's at the top. It's right there. There oh, you go. Yeah, there you no, go. No, I, good. I'm I'm aware. I'm, no, this but no, this shoot part it. I figured out. No, this shoot part it. I figured out. Okay, good. Uh, that's great. The, the, that's the that's awesome. I'm uh, I'll probably pick that up once I get my Xbox One X all set up and ready to go, and it'll be one of the first games I install on it. That plus Forza Horizon Four, which is going to look gorgeous on Xbox that. One X and Sea of Thieves. <laughs> yes, right. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. This, this has got a, uh, Shadow Tomb Raider. You're a PlayStation on that, aren't you? That yes, I am PlayStation on that. I, I play my as I've mentioned. I think probably in the past, my Xbox is for Xbox. It's Xbox. an exclusive machine. Yeah, yeah. So it, my PS3 was only for exclusives back in that generation as well. Yeah. So my Xbox One is for the stuff that I can only play on Xbox. Yeah, and it's, and it's funny because it's the opposite for me. I'm, yes. I'm I play PlayStation for the exclusives. Yes, and Xbox, and even then you hardly played gaming. the exclusives. I still, I've been playing quite a bit lately. Good, a lot of, lot of, lot, a lot of Spider-Man, of Spider-Man, Spider good. Spider-Man. Uh, and speaking of Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Games Radar came out with an article this week talking about a new streaming service from yes. Microsoft that allows you to stream Xbox games, Xbox One games, to any device. Basically, your smartphone. Okay. Yeah. So, and and they're working on interfaces that allow you to use the touch screen to control it. So all the buttons of the Xbox will be available at the touch of a finger on screen. I can't imagine that would be very easy to play. It's not going to be. I, I don't think it's like on on like a screen like this. It's not going to no, be the easiest thing to do. No, absolutely like, not. To do, but you can connect a controller to that as well, and, right. and and play. Which that I I'm actually kind of or or a tablet or your your PC yeah. or somebody else's PC, a random computer that you, mm -hmm. you find like in the wild. I think this is, I think this is fantastic to see happening because yeah. we've said it before in the past. I think the future of gaming is in streaming. And yeah. if Microsoft is actually experimenting with being able to stream Xbox games to any device, I mean, where does that put the Nintendo Switch, if you really think about it? You know? It puts them in a spot where, hey, you, they should create an Xbox app right on there. So, you know, you could stream stuff straight to 
your Nintendo <laughs> to Switch. Your Switch. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Tico. There you Wouldn't go. Wouldn't that not be awesome? Now Create we're a special. Just partner with with Microsoft. You can stream stuff straight to your Switch. Get like special Joy Cons designed to look like an Xbox. Hey. You know buttons and stuff like, like that. Like maybe an Xbox controller split in half. Where have I heard that idea before? Uh, I believe we we thought of that, but didn't patent anything, so we'll get no money out of it no matter <laughs> yeah, what. That's true. I mean, I like this idea of being able to stream games to your device because if yeah. if your device is only displaying the video, and you need really good um, bandwidth, obviously, like this yes. this wouldn't be viable today because the most of Canada, most of the U.S. doesn't have the kind of bandwidth that's required, right? Yeah. You need good fast bandwidth in order to stream this properly but i love the fact that they're working on this tech yeah you know uh i don't believe it'll be ready for next generation but i think the next generation is when we're going to start seeing it more prevalent right yeah. we're going to start seeing xbox game pass becoming more prevalent and oh yeah Getting to the point where you don't need to install the game on your Xbox to play it. You can just stream it with your... with Onto your, your Xbox, onto your whatever device yeah. you want. But with your subscription, your Xbox will then just become the the interface to yeah. the streaming service, you know. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of excited for that day. But it also begs to question where will... Where will licensing go from that point? So if you purchase a game, quote unquote, yeah. could you eventually lose access to a game you've purchased? Yeah, we, yes. I mean, we, we yes, saw this could. We saw this with, with Apple where they've been like, well, we, you don't own those movies. We were just letting you use it for what we felt like it, That's and right. now you don't, you don't get them anymore. You don't have them so, anymore. They're removed yeah, you, from you, your history even. They're removed from your library. Yeah. So I mean we are we are in a there it is a slippery slope because that could happen. Anything digital they could decide to remove and and you would no longer have access to stuff that you have purchased. Yeah, absolutely. Um but you know, you weigh that against the convenience of not having to, you know, have, you know, like forty shelves full of, you know, five or six hundred games. That's true. Like, yes. I don't. I, I mean, if I had every single game that I have on my Xbox digitally, if I had to find a place to store that. Oh my gosh, Tico. Uh, yeah, I would need a separate gaming, like just a game closet, like a whole room, room walk-in game closet. That entire room you're in right now would be full. Yeah, this would all be full of nothing but. You would have nothing but. You'd have to games. have Sid Bolton's basement. Yeah, yeah. It would. It would look exactly. I, I have. It's. My current Xbox gaming library is around 1,200. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, digital titles. That is nuts. That's nuts. Uh, and speaking of streaming, while we're on that topic, um, Google is actually working with Ubisoft to test uh, Google's Project Stream beta. And people who have been invited to this beta can actually stream a full version of Assassin's Creed Odyssey to their Google Chrome browser on their PC. Yeah. That's... Full availability. You have to have, obviously, good down, good bandwidth, as we mentioned earlier. But yeah, you can play the entire... Until January, I think, this beta is going on. But this is a project that Google's working on to allow AAA video games to be streamed directly to your browser. That's like that's pretty incredible when you think about it. Yeah. Like you yes, know? just I mean again, our downloads in Canada suck. Well, well yours is yours. Mine's is fine. pretty mine's, good actually. Yeah, mine's mine's not so. I mean it, it's okay, but you know. Uh, this is exciting. I mean this is yeah. this is the future. This is the of, future of gaming. We've it said is this digital. It, well. it, it it is digital. The future of gaming is digital. It yeah. is it is streaming. It is yeah. Um, no longer needing a console. I mean, a set top box is pretty much what you're going to need moving forward. At some at some I, point, this is all you're going to need. I think we will still see another another box from yeah. both Sony. Sony has already said they have officially announced that they are, or well, not. I wouldn't say officially, but they have acknowledged they are working on what we'll call PS5. the PS5. They yeah. are already working on it. There will be a box 
for PS5. Yeah. But in my personal opinion, I think PS5 and whatever Xbox 2 is going to be, um, I think that will be the last physical box from these companies. I think that you may see a... Like, Un unless we see like an Apple TV like style. A little, yeah, like a little hub box. Yes, or something. like you an Apple TV. You access our stuff. Yeah. with this box i agree i think that's yeah. where it's going to go after the next gen yeah you know uh i think that's inevitable when when games become streamable completely yeah you know and you just subscribe to it like we do netflix yep yeah. so um we have uh, about 10 minutes left that's it that's it uh that's real it. quick borderlands 2 vr has been announced to go i'm going to yes. be able to play borderlands 2 on playstation vr that is really cool. Although in December, in December, although yeah. they said they're going to have support for the move controllers, yeah, which is going to be point and click movement. I'm like, well, how does that work in a game like Borderlands? That is such a a twitch movement game. Yeah, I'm going to slowly move over there. No, you need to be running and jumping and back yeah. flipping and. Or you can use the regular the controller. controller. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, my question to Gearbox is. Why not the gun? Why not the PS aim controller? Why is that not an option? Because now you've got a gun and movement. You've got Twitch control with move controller <coughs> functionality. Why is that not an option? Dual wielding. Um, you're still aiming at the same thing though, right? Even if you've got oh. two guns in game. I, I don't know. Yeah, I you're, guess you're, you're you're probably right. I guess if you have two move controls, you can aim at two things at the same time. But you can't if you're using the regular controller anyway. So why yeah, not that's... give us PS aim controller options? That's the only thing I'm noticing from this article that's missing is they mention they do not mention the aim controller. And it's 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 like we're two months exactly, almost uh, two months less a day. And it's just an option. It's not like yeah. you have to own it to play the game. It's just an option if you do own it. I'm interested to hear your thoughts once you once you because that art style is fantastic. I'm wondering what that's going to look like in VR. In VR, in 3D VR, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very very interested to hear your thoughts on that once uh, once you uh, get a copy of I'm, that. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, yeah, Borderlands in v in VR. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's it's like it's like our PAX trip the other day. VR after everything. After everything. We were going to do after. that. We totally missed out doing that. Fallout 76. Um, Are you going to be getting Fallout 76? I, I'm not. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sold on that game right now. Like at the moment, I am a huge Fallout fan. Fallout 76, the. I, I am not a fan of that, that style of game. Those, uh, uh, you know, whatever, survival, whatever they call them. Yeah, um, and it's online only. So here's my problem with it. And we've said this earlier when they first announced it back in December. We don't like the idea of just being able to be killed by anybody. Because yeah. that's the kind of world it's going to be. There's going to be people out there that just go around griefing everyone. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's a lovely house. Would be a shame if somebody blew it up. So the way that Bethesda is dealing with griefers is you can shoot anyone you want. Okay, but, okay, so there's two ways that this can play out. If you're attacked by another player, and I'm reading directly from the article, if yeah. you're attacked by another player, you can either fight back and start something serious, or you can ignore it. Fighting back makes the encounter official, and both players are scaled to a similar level to even the playing field. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, that's kind of neat. So it's not going to be like, hey, I'm level 100 and going to run around in the newbie area and just... Right. Uh, however, more powerful equipment will skew things a little bit. Yeah. If you don't fight back, your aggressor can keep hitting you until you die, although they'll deal a lot less damage. In theory, this is supposed to stop players from constantly killing each other, but obviously the concern is some players just won't care, and they'll attack regardless. That's exactly what I'm thinking. There are people whose only sole purpose is to go play the game and... Uh, just kill people because they think it's fun. Apparently there's going to be a penalty for murdering too many people who don't fight back. 
Yeah. If you go on the spree, you'll apparently be hit with a significant debuff, reducing the damage that you do to everything, player and mutant alike, and it applies for two hours real time. What's more, you'll lose all of your in-game money. Is that enough to deter these players? I don't think it is, to be honest with you. If you have somebody, there are people who just, that is all they do. I'm sure you could go on right now, find somebody on Twitch who that's all they're doing is running around and just absolutely griefing players. And they're not going to care if they don't have any in-game money. You know, they'll spend their money, they'll spend their money on equipment beforehand. So they'll have no money to lose. And then they'll go around and run around and kill people. They don't. Two hours is nothing. They'll, they'll that's what around. I'm thinking. And and, and 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 for them, that's great. It's a it's a it's a penalty and everything like that. But for me, I want to go and play. I want to build something. I want to do a quest. I want to do whatever. I don't want to be getting shot in the back of the head as I'm trying to get through. Regardless, exactly. of the, I, the, it doesn't make me feel any better to know that guy is going to get a debuff. Like I'm halfway right. through, uh, you know, a, a quest or something like that, and I'm getting shot and killed. Yeah. Yeah, He's exactly. now ruined my chance. It's not fun. It takes away my fun and enjoyment from the game, the fact that somebody can do that. Even even if it takes him a lot of bullets to kill you, yeah, it's still an annoying thing to have someone shooting at you while you're trying to do something else. Yeah, I'm trying to build a house. I'm trying to complete a quest. I'm fighting a bunch of mutants already. And this guy's picking off my, you know, off my health slowly but surely. Yeah. It's going to affect how quickly I die in my enjoyment of the game. I am very much not excited for Fallout 76 in any way. Listen, if it comes out and, you know, like it absolutely blows everybody away, uh, you know, maybe we'll get a review copy. I'm willing to give it a try, but I, I'm not sold on, I'm not sold on this game at the moment. I'm a fan of the, the universe, but I am not completely sold on on, on jumping into that right now. I absolutely agree. Absolutely. We only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, I think you are very excited about this final news. Yes. Item. So uh, this is a follow up to, to a, uh, last week and week before that. So Telltale, which, uh, you know, is still still closing, closed. Yeah. Um, they have been working with uh, looking for uh, a partner to finish The Walking Dead, the final season uh, game that they had. And it's um, so interesting who they got. Yeah, so Robert Kirkman, who is the uh, writer of the Walking Dead, who is the Dead. writer and creator of of the Walking Dead comic book, um, other books, TV show, all of all of that fun stuff, has stepped in with his development development studio, uh, Skybound. Yes, and I did they not going, realize he owned Skybound. Yeah, yeah. So um, they do a lot of board games and stuff as well. Like yeah, they, like some really good stuff. Um, and they are stepping in, and they are going to finish the game. Um, I'm awesome. not sure. I'm not sure if they're going to be hiring, um, you know, Telltale, the former Telltale employees, to finish it. I know that there was talk that a lot of it was already close to completion um, for both of the final two chapters. Um, but I am, I'm excited to know that that is going to get finished, um, which makes me happy because I bought the season pass for it. So yeah, so you'll get glad it. to. I'm glad to hear that I will get those two final pieces and the story will be be finished. I'm I think I read that they they are planning to bring in some of the Telltale crew as contractors yeah. to finish it, which is good for them. That's yeah. fantastic. And you know what? Uh, applaud let's applaud uh, Robert Kirkman Sky Brown for doing this. Yes. You know, for, because for keeping his own his own IP going, I guess. Well, yeah, but yeah. you know, no, no, I, because I, I of the fans. It's even it's not even it's it, it assures the fans aren't even let down because those who've been around, like you and I, who've been around since yeah. the beginning of the Walking Dead Telltale series, we want to see how Clementine's story ends. Yeah, you want to see how that ends, and and it being only half completed, I haven't even started the new walking dead game for the exact reason is like i was it was getting ready to get started on it and it's like okay now i don't know if i want to fully st i'm going to finish i'm going to play it eventually but i want to find out where i'm going to be it's like one of those things where you don't really want to get into a tv show that ends in a cliffhanger that's right if you don't know if there's going to be another season or not exactly exactly right so that's awesome um, that's awesome we yeah. are going to see the end of clementine's uh basically the clementine trilogy uh, yes yeah, because there's been more than three, but there's only three with Clementine, I believe, correct? She was in... Or is she yeah, in four? So is this her fourth? She was in the first one, Walking Dead. She was in A New Frontier, uh, where she was the main uh, protagonist. Yes. And then, again, this one here, where she's the main protagonist. Um, there so, was one... There's the Michonne story, which was a separate one. Right, but there's um, also... Um, the Walking Dead, A New Frontier. Is that the one you just mentioned? That's Yeah, that's A New Frontier is the... Uh, yeah, 
one of the games I have to give away for Extra Life. Yeah, so that is... That is uh... That's her second story. Yes. Okay. Right, and then there's Michonne, and then there's the final chapter. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so that's great. I think that's awesome. Um, we'll finally get that done. And I kind of wonder if, if he's c- jumping in just to finish it, or is there something else going on? Is he going to be able to maybe pick up other IPs from Telltale? Who knows? I would love to see some of the other canceled stuff get a new home. Um, Fable Two. Fable Two, exactly. I uh, would love to see that get that or get Wolf picked Among up. Us uh, Two, whatever they're calling it. Uh, yes, um, the Stranger Things uh, mm-hmm. game that they had uh, recently announced. I know. I, I, I'm I'm hoping somebody is able to do something with that because that is a universe I would love to play that style of game in as well. All right, well, that pretty much brings us to the end of this week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for watching. And we haven't done this on this show for a while, but you can follow us. I am, of course, Zion Tain everywhere, and that is X-I-A-N-T-A-Y-N-E. And uh, I am Mr. Second Place. You can follow me there. That's right, Mr. At, Second at, Place. At, at Mr. Second Place is where um, you yeah, have the, the, the show we are at the omg hour on twitter and uh thanks for listening thanks for watching if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed please do so uh if you're listening to it on our podcast come check us out on youtube also don't forget i'm doing uh extra life i have uh i've surpassed a thousand dollar mark today which is awesome i am and looking to raise twenty five hundred dollars and i have a huge list of games to give away for anyone who massive. donates so I, I want to. I actually want to give you a, a big shout out because I, I saw something you tweeted or, or po- posted earlier about your total in the nine years you've been doing this year. This so far, you you hit a milestone. I did uh, the- today. I hit ten thousand dollars raised for Hamilton McMaster in the nine Which, years I've been doing this. That is that is absolutely amazing. So that's, and, uh, wow, it was just. I, I but it's all due to all of you who support me. Yeah, you know. If it, if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't have done that, you know, and I love doing extra life every year. So, and I love giving away and I love giving back to those who donate, which is why I, I try very hard every year to get games given so that I can give them to you. Um, so yeah. donate, your name goes in a list. I draw randomly. I've started drawing now, now that I've hit a thousand dollars every day, every weekday, Leading up to game day, I'm going to draw at least two names to win a game. There's so much. There's Assassin's Creed, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There's all these. There's Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, and I want to point out Dawn that there's some, some sort of a fix in, because my name wasn't drawn first this year, so there's some sort of a fix. Something happened? Is that what you're saying? Something must have happened, because my name should have been drawn first. That's usually how it works. That's how it happened last year. And Sorry. it didn't happen this year. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I will continue in protest. Uh, but um, congratulations to to both Brian and Andy who are were the yes. winners today. Brian and Andy both won today, so congrats. Uh, Hellblade sent you with sacrifices on the list. Some Lego games, Life is Strange too. Uh, we got Shadow of the Colossus, Sea of Thieves, Starlink. I'm gonna have after it launches. You know, the just the game. The games are huge. Literally, I have more games than donors or donors. So yeah. you donate now, you are guaranteed to win something. Yeah, okay. get get your get your name on that list and and win some stuff. It's, it's yeah. for a great cause and some really good prizes. That's right. So it is uh, bit.ly slash extra Sean, and it's a capital E for extra, capital S for Sean. And uh, for some reason, Bitly is case sensitive, and I do not like that. So that is that is weird. But thank you everybody for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye guys. This has been an omgnexus.com production.